Hi there. Welcome to Live with the Paper Pixie episode. What are we today? 326, I believe. I'm Julie DiMatteo, the Paper Pixie, coming to you live from Alpharetta, Georgia. Today is Wednesday, April 17th, 2024, and I'm excited about tonight's projects. If you are watching us live, say hello and where you're watching from in the live chat. And if you'd like to participate in the live chat, you just have to be logged into your YouTube account or your Google account, um, and then you can participate in tonight's live chat. You'll notice some folks in the live chat with a cute little uh, magic wand next to their name. Those are my Pixie patrons. They are channel members for $4.99 per month. They're supporting our channel here. We're so grateful for them. Speaking of which, tomorrow night is my next members only stream for specifically for my pixie patrons that is at 8 p.m eastern time and it's episode seven of members only so if you're interested in joining the pixie patrons you can join us tomorrow night look for the join button beneath this video it should be right next to the subscribe button depending on what device you're watching me on if you're watching me on an ios device using the YouTube app, you might not see the join button. So you can just go to the paperpixie.com slash patron. That will take you where you need to go. Or you can just use your browser on your iOS device and you should see the join button there as well. So again, tomorrow night, episode seven, 8 p.m. Eastern time. And if you can't make it during that time, you can always watch the replay. Let's see. Let me show you um, what we're making tonight. This is an angled trifold card take two. The angles are slightly different, so I can't wait to show you on how to make that easy with the angles with the designer series paper. I'm going with a purple theme today. And then I have got an explosion treat box. Inside is Tic Tacs. So I'm excited to show you both of those tonight. I am using kind of a mis um, um, mishmash of products that are retiring and also products that are carrying over. I am not feeling 100% tonight. I didn't have the greatest of lunches, so I'm just, you know, I don't have a project sheet for you yet. I will. Um, I do have all the measurements ready. Everything's cut and ready to go, except I do need to grab my die cutting machine. But um, as soon as I can, I'm gonna get that project sheet linked in the description. So stay tuned for that. Probably will get that up um, first thing in the morning. So just bear with me there. And then my blog post will show up on Friday. So if you have a question for me tonight, this is the way we do things around here. If you're new, put new in the chat so that my amazing audience can give you a big warm welcome. But we do Q&A at the end of tonight's live stream. So if you do have a question for me, put a Q in front of that question. Otherwise, it's just a comment. I will answer questions live at the end of the stream. I'm going to save them all for the end so that I can focus on demonstrating tonight's projects for you and get through those, especially for my replay watchers. That way they can watch the uh, demonstration in uninterrupted. Who words are hard tonight. When you shop with me, you earn pixie perks on orders of $25 or more. All you need to do is use my magic shopping link, thepaperpixie.com slash shop. That will auto magically take you to the online store, Stampin' Up! online store, shopping with me with my current host code attached to your order. I just opened up another new host code for the month on the 16th. Um, but if you use that shop link, uh, that will automatically add whatever is current. So you don't have to look for it or add it separately. Now, if your order is $150 or more, you do want to remove that host code if there is one attached to your order because you're going to earn Stampin' Rewards from Stampin' Up! But you'll also earn Pixie Perks from me as well. I'm going to flip my screen really quickly. Whoops, that didn't work. Oh, you know what? I don't have my, um, hold on. I don't have my other camera turned on yet. I was like, I know I'm forgetting something. So let's give that a moment. Let's see if it's, yay, it's ready. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, what am I forgetting? All right, quick sneak peek of the projects. And then I want to share a couple of things before we jump into tonight's demonstration. So this card actually has a Velcro closure, which I think I forgot to mention last week as an option for closing these angled trifold cards. Um, this is the version from last week. It may look very, it's similar, but I think you'll notice that the angles are different. So I'm going to show you how easy it is to get that designer series paper layer with the perfect angles. And I do want to give a shout out to Martha and her niece, Melva. They saw a swap at on stage. They wanted me to help try to figure out so I was tickled to figure out how to, 
how to do the angles on the designer series paper. So this is on last week's live stream. It also posted to my blog at thepaperpixie.com as well. And then here is our little explosion treat holder. It's kind of book style here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and just, it actually kind of self closes here self-closes or it holds itself closed, whatever you call that. Um, but you'll see that it is a little bit of an explosion. And these are the, uh, I thought that said three, but I must not have had my glasses on earlier today. They're the one ounce Tic Tacs here in the US, but you'll see that there's no adhesive there. And then this just folds up together and then the little tab tucks in and holds it all, so, all together. So that is a really cute, um, like random act of kindness gift. You'll see that there's a little bit of a gap here and that's because I wanted to make sure I could create this with a six by six. So I had to get a little bit creative. Um, so a couple of things I wanna to touch base on before we jump into the demonstration. We are in the midst of the last chance period and these are products that are retiring from the outgoing annual catalog and the outgoing mini catalog. Uh, so I do have a couple of downloads available it's now four streams ago, but the last chance list from both catalogs, um, I'm gonna get to that in just a moment. Um, there are products that are gonna have price increases, favorites that are going away. Again, all those ink refills are already sold out. Everything as well supplies last that is retiring. It's got a couple of um, digital downloads. Again, that's available a couple of live streams ago. Um, so it's last chance. Um, I also have, uh, my product shares are open. That is both the last chance link as well as my product shares. The um, Stampin' Blends labels, I've updated those for the new, the five new in colors. So if you've already purchased these, you should have received an email on March 29th with the update link. Otherwise, it's an $8 digital download that comes with free updates for as long as Stampin' Blends are a current product. So you'll be able to see the full name on those labels just using a 3 eighths of an inch circle punch. And you just affix them to the end of your Stamp and Blends labels with mini glue dots. So I can't live without these labels now. Super, super helpful. So product shares, those are open for sign up. Again, the important date here is the last day for sign up is April 28th for both the uh, product shares as well as in color club. So we've got five new in colors coming in uh, and I've got in color club that's from May through September. Each month you're gonna get all the products for one of the five new in colors. It's always a surprise color um, that you'll receive each month. And then each month I also have a surprise free gift about an $8 average val value over the five months. So again, mark your calendars. April 28th is the last chance for that. No exceptions because we will be heading to Mexico after that. So April 28th. This is the cover of the new annual catalog that launches on May 1st. And my customers who've requested their catalog um, have started to receive them. Some of them are still in transit, but most of them, I wouldn't say most, probably 75% of them have already been delivered. So I hope you've enjoyed flipping the, through those pages. It's killing me not be able to show you to not be able to show you the inside, but I will starting May 1st. I might have said March and I meant May. I don't know, my brain is fried tonight. So let's go ahead and start with tonight's projects. We're gonna start with the explosion treat holder. Um, and again, this is the one ounce Tic Tac size. I think Tic Tacs are a slightly different size in the UK, I'm not sure. I feel like ours are a little bit bigger. Um, the finished dimensions of this, let me measure it. And that will be included on the project sheet as well. We are the box itself is three inches tall, one and seven eighths inch wide, and three quarters of an inch deep, okay? I love explosion boxes because they um, use a minimal amount of paper and they can hold themselves closed as well. So we're gonna start with a six inch by six inch piece of designer series paper. And this is the perennial lavender. Always forget. Yes, Perennial Lavender Designer Series paper. This paper is carrying over, so we get it for a whole nother year, which I love because purple is my favorite. So let me grab the Simply Score. All right. 
looking at my measurements here. I'm going to go ahead and turn this to where the, so I have a directional pattern. What I mean by directional is there's the flowers on here only go a certain direction. So top to bottom, I'm going to turn it so that the pattern is sideways and it doesn't matter which way I start with it going left to right, right to left, but you want that pattern to be sideways. And we're going to make a score line at one and a half from each side. So one and a half, I'm going to rotate it 180 and do one and a half again. Okay. Now I'm going to turn the pattern upside down for these next measurements. And that is just so that the orientation of the box is where I've got the opening here on the right side. So it's a little bit like a book fold kind of, I mean, I'm loosely calling it that. <laughs> so, all right. So I've got my pattern upside down. And if you didn't have a directional pattern, these, the, the, Directions don't really matter, um, but with directional paper, we're going to start with the with the pattern upside down, and I'm going to score at one and seven eighths, two and five eighths, four and a half, and five and a quarter. So I'm going to repeat that again with the pattern going sideways or left to right or right to left. We're scoring at one and a half inches from each side. So one and a half, one and a half. Then with my pattern upside down, I'm going to score at one and seven eighths, two and five eighths. Oh, we have a sugar ant. It's um, that time of year where the sugar ants just come in from everywhere. <laughs> it's, and now he's on my paper. Hmm. Awesome. We're live, folks. All right. So one and seven eighths, two and five eighths, four and a half, and five and a quarter. We've already treated them once with borax and powdered sugar and water, and we need to treat them again, don't we? <laughs> all right, I'm going to go ahead and fold and burnish on all the score lines. This is, I think, my favorite pattern. Uh, in the perennial lavender designer series paper. I just love the different shades of purple with the little pops of white. Oh, there's another one over there. <laughs> it's like they know I'm alive. They're like, let's go mess with the paper pixie. All right, so here is our template here. Um, we have got two score lines here. If you kind of turn this in the right, well, so my pattern's upside down, because remember that's where we scored starting at one and seven eighths. We have two sections here along the right that are three quarters of an inch. This is going to end up being our flap that tucks into the box. Okay. So um, what I'm going to do first is let's go ahead and do our diagonal score lines. So I'm going to kind of turn my template this way. And we're going to do these by hand, um, mostly because I'm trying to maximize the paper and you'll see that the diagonal score line doesn't go all the way to the opposite corner because these shapes here are rectangular instead of square. So turning it this way where I've got, it really doesn't matter, but where I've got my three quarter inch sections here kind of towards me, if I flip it over, you might be able to see them better. I'm going to flip it to the back side and fold on that side score line. And I'm going to go ahead and line up one to the third score line up. So see, there's one, two, third score line up. We're going to line up that score line with this folded edge. And that's going to help us create this diagonal score line. And by doing that, I'm going to go ahead and do this quickly. And then I will, or I'm going to do it. And then I'll bring it closer to the camera. Again, this horizontal score line with this vertical fold. I like to kind of put my fingernail or the tip of my bone folder there to kind of get it started. And then I actually just burnish with my fingernail in here, but you could come in with a bone folder as well. So we have taken the third score line up this one and lined it up with that folded edge like so. And you want to take your time to get that lined up really nicely. And what that does is it gives us this diagonal fold here like magic. Okay. We're going to do the same thing to the opposite side, going up to the third score line, third horizontal score line, lining that up along that folded edge. 
and just, you know, I just put my fingernail right there to kind of get that started right there in the corner. And then lining up that score line to the folded edge and burnish like so. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and rotate it. <laughs> That's good, Marcella. I'm gonna remember that for Nolan. I look at all the chat after the stream, so I will be sure to share that with him. Thank you. All right, I flipped this around. We've got our three quarter inch sections along the top. We're gonna to do the same thing, only this time we're gonna focus on that first horizontal score line and lining it up with that folded edge. So I'm gonna fold in on that half, one and a half inch score line. This horizontal score line, we're gonna line up with this folded edge. There we go. Yay. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing over here, that first horizontal score line, lining it up with that folded edge. And you'll see where we fold here, there's about three eighths of an inch that that edge is not meeting up. And that is just to make sure that we can create this without, uh, without a larger piece than six by six. I always love creating projects with six by six. So your box is gonna look something like this. We've got those, I always say it looks like a frog mouth. <laughs> but once you have those diagonal score lines in, you can reference the template once I get the project sheet uploaded. Um, then you'll just make sure that you've got those diagonal score lines in the right rectangles there. Okay. Now we're going to come back to these three quarter inch score line sections because I want to remove these two sections in the corner. So um, this middle section here is a three inch section and making sure I have the right paper snips here. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and cut up each of the vertical score lines, again with those two three quarter inch sections facing me. And I'm gonna come just inside the score line and I'm gonna stop at the second horizontal score line. Um, cutting just inside the score line, make sure that this tab fits nicely into the explosion box. Okay, so we've got, I don't know if you can see that, but the score line is still attached to the sections we're about to cut away. Turn it a quarter of a turn and we're gonna remove those two sections. So goodbye to those. These are the, those two rectangle pieces there. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side here, again, cutting just inside of the score line. So we leave the score line behind on the piece that we're cutting away. Just barely see that there. And then quarter of a turn and remove that. I think it's technically a square, but it's two sections. Like so, okay. Now that looks like our template. We do need to round some corners here. I got a new corner rounder punch I found on Amazon. It's EK Success and it came in a two pack, um, a one inch and a half inch. I like the one inch diameter um, and we're just going to go ahead and round the corner so just grab any corner rounder you have there we go so corners are rounded and then i'm going to use a little half inch circle punch and we're going to put a little finger notch here and i'm coming in almost halfway into that circle and punch. We'll just remove that little half circle there. Okay. So now we are ready to go. And this is so easy at this point that these are great projects for doing multiples because they go together so fast and they don't require any adhesive, just a little bit of scoring and cutting. So the way this goes together is those two pieces fold into the back these two fold into the front, and then let me grab another thing of Tic Tacs. <laughs> These are from Christmas time, but it's the same size. The Now, this is funny. This one says 0.84 ounces. They must have put less Tic Tacs in the container, but it's the same container size. So that, yeah, it is the same size. So that's just going to fit right in there. 
And then do you see where these little, this part of the explosion box is? We're just gonna tuck our little tab right in between these two card layers. And sometimes it's a little finicky the first time you do it, but once you get it in there, look, it holds itself together. And it's like this cute little tic-tac book. It's not really a book, but I like the orientation of it in portrait. Okay, so now let's go ahead and do a little bit of embellishing. I'm gonna share the products we're using. We are using the So Sincere stamp set and the sentiment just for you. This one we're gonna use on the card. Put that back here for a second. And then we're using my favorite Reach for the Stars dies and the diameter circle I'm using for this one is about one and an eighth in diameter. We're then using the circle from the Radiating Stitches dies. This one is about a one and a half inch diameter. These are part of the online exclusives if you haven't seen them before. And then these guys are retiring the labels a glow dies, but I love the circle that comes in it. And this one is about one and three quarters because it's got some really cool detail to the edge there. All right, so I've at least cut the circle from the labels a glow dies and the radiating stitches, just so you can see the detail there. That one is in Gorgeous Grape, and this is Basic White. And then I'm gonna grab a scrap piece of Basic White, maybe. In Gorgeous Grape ink. And then the Just For You sentiment from So Sincere. That stamped. And let me grab the stamp and cut and emboss machine. Let's get our circle die lined up here. Just got some post it tape here. Because this is a red rubber stamp, I like to stamp first and then die cut. If it were photopolymer, I could save myself a step there. All right, so we're doing plate number one, plate number two, cutting plate three, the piece we're gonna die cut, and then another cutting plate three. And we'll run that through. our little circle die there. I'm remembering to use my magnetic bowl. <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna layer these three together. I had fun layering. It's fun to kind of study your dies. You guys, I get the question asked a lot if I keep the dies, the coordinating dies with their stamp set, and I actually don't because of Reasons like this, I love to look at the dies that I have in my stash and figure out different cool ways to layer them. Especially circles, I'm gonna miss some of these circles, especially the reach for the stars dies. You guys know I use those all the time. Hoping someday we'll get the smooth circles back. Cause I just think they're a staple. Now I'm paying attention to the little dots on that basic white circle and just wanting to kind of line up my sentiment kind of like the clock like 12 and 6 Let's see that looks pretty good all right next I'm going to use the white Baker's twine from the Baker's twine essentials pack and we're going to create a little faux bow here if you've got kinks in your Baker's twine just Run it between your thumb and forefinger, or your thumb and bone folder, I should say. 
no forefinger involved here. And then I'm just gonna do a little loop-de-loop, -loop, kind of a zigzag, kind of eyeballing where that will peek out from. Let's see. Making those tails a little bit longer. Maybe that's too long, yep. All right, zhuzhing, I'm gonna grab my sharper scissors here. And a mini glue dot. So I'm gonna just take the center of my little zigzag. You'll be able to see it better once I put it on the glue dot here. Getting those center three pieces pinched together. And just kind of stuck them right there in the glue dot. So it's just a little bit of a zigzag. There's no knot involved. You got two tails, two loops. And I'm gonna place those just with my take your pick tool. It's gonna end up going behind our sentiment here. I'm gonna do it like that. And if you need to adjust anything, you, the glue dot's pretty forgiving, like so. Okay, so we just have it kind of going at a bit of an angle like that. And then I'm just gonna grab two uh, dimensionals, kind of place them on either side of our little faux bow. And then we'll pop our sentiment over the top. Trying to center it top to bottom, left to right still get access with those dimensionals. You can still access the finger notch there. And then I'm just gonna do one more trim on the tails. That one's pretty good. This one's a little long. And then of course, we need a little bit of bling. Got a fresh pack of rhinestones here. I'm just gonna take my little putty tip and Pick up a medium one there. And there we have our Tic Tac, I don't know, what should we call it? A Tic Tac explosion box or a Tic Tac explosion book? What would you call it, Brian? <laughs> He's looking at it. I don't know, it's a tough one. It's an, definitely an explosion box. We've just changed the orientation to where it is in portrait versus, and it opens on the side versus opening on the top. So that's the versatility of this one. Um, is you could actually change the design and have it go landscape or portrait. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so there we go. That is our Tic Tac Explosion Box. Let me show you the sample. They look very similar, if not identical, but I love these. And I know, I don't know, People are kind of mixed on if they want to give people Tic Tacs. I love the um, the fruit Tic Tacs because they're not really mints. <laughs> My kids think they're all like candy. But I always share the story because Tic Tacs remind me so much of my dad, Papa Pixie. He always had loose Tic Tacs in his, I'm pretty sure it was also his change pocket. I never thought twice about it whenever he'd hand me a mint or two, um, but you know, it was convenient to carry them outside of the little container. I don't know if any of you had a, a dad or a granddad that did that loose Tic Tacs in the pocket. I know my dad wasn't the only one, but Tic Tacs always remind me of him. And I have a lot of different Tic Tac projects, different sizes of Tic Tacs, little minis, little pillow packs. Um, and then these are just the standard size that you would find, like up by the cash register at CVS or the gas station, um, but a cute little treat box using just a six by six. So why don't we go ahead and jump into tonight's fun fold. It's quick and easy, I promise. Um, I am gonna take the guesswork out of the angles for you. So, all right. These measurements are gonna be very similar to last week, just a couple of slight differences. So we're gonna start with a card base and this is Gorgeous Grape that measures five and a half by 11, okay? So I'm gonna bring in my Simply Scored. And we are going to cut this, not cut it. We don't cut with the Simply Scored. Uh, we're gonna go ahead along the long side. I'm gonna score this at three and three eighths 
from each side. So three and three eighths, rotate it 180, and three and three eighths again. Now, we're gonna use the ball tip of our stylus and we're gonna make some little tick marks to help us create this really cool set of angles here on the card. So um, I am going to go ahead and turn it to the five and a half inch side and I'm gonna make a little tick mark at two and one eighth. Okay, so two and one eighth and I'm just pressing at the top there on my Simply Score to create that little tick mark. I'm gonna flip it and repeat two and one eighth again. Okay, then I'm gonna turn it to the long side, again with this side along the, well, either side's the same, but we've got it on the long side, I'm gonna do two and one eighth again. I'm gonna flip and do two and one eighth again. So what we've essentially done is from the corner to the tick mark in both directions is two and one eighth. Okay, so if I flip it over, that's two and one eighth from the corner and that's two and one eighth from the corner. Okay, can you see? They're kind of hard to see, but. So technically, same distance from the corner. I'm gonna repeat the same thing on the opposite side. So I'm going to the short side, the five and a half inch side, tick mark at two and one eighth. Flip my cardstock, two and one eighth again. Then I'm gonna turn it to the long side, again, kind of keeping the same corner here, two and one eighth flip it two and one eighth. So just kind of fo focus on the corners and making sure you've got tick marks two and one eighth down and two and one eighth across. And you just kind of work your cardstock two and one eighth then flip it two and one eighth, turn it this way, two and one eighth, two and one eighth, okay? So you really only have to remember two measurements so far with the card base. We've got five and a half, well, I guess more than two, but five and a half by 11, score at three and three eighths from each side. And then we're making tick marks at two and one eighth from the corner on all four corners, okay? All right, now I'm gonna bring in the Simply Scored. And essentially what we're gonna do is cut from tick mark to tick mark. So what I like to do is line up, let me zoom in so you can see this better. I am starting with this tick mark here. You can just barely see it. Placing that right in the cutting groove and then I can pivot the top and I'm gonna take that top tick mark. It's a little hard to see there. It's easier to see when you do this in person. So tick mark to tick mark and then I'm gonna cut. Whoops like so. And then I'm just going to keep rotating around. So tick mark to tick mark, we're going to cut. I realize I'm ultra zoomed in right now, but I want you to be able to see these. Zoom this up a little bit. Okay. So we got tick mark in the cutting groove, tick mark in the cutting groove, cut, and then repeat on all four corners. Always kind of double check yourself that you're not going to the other tick mark. As I'm way off screen here. Tick mark. There we go. So you can just barely see it there. Lining it up in the cutting groove. Zoom back out. All right, so let me show you what that looks like. Technically, that's an octagon, <laughs> but a really weird shaped one. <laughs> um, and then these are the four squares that we cut off. Technically, they're gonna make like two and one eighth inch squares if you were to put them together. So that's just by nature of doing those tick marks, all of them two and one eighth from the corner. So it's, you're technically cutting off a little right angle, right triangle, right angle triangle. <laughs> Sounds like too many angles there. All right, now the fun part is where we're gonna get the perfect angles on our designer series paper. I know that this is one of the main reasons why I never wanted to try these cards because I could never get the angles right, but I figured out um, the trick for both of these. So watch last week's episode for this one, and then I'm gonna show you right now how to do this one. 
I have got two pieces of the perennial lavender paper and these measure five and a quarter by three and one eighth. I'm gonna take one of these and I'm gonna flip this over. So I've got, uh, these are valley score lines. So this is the side of the cardstock that I scored on. I'm gonna flip it over and I'm also gonna flip my designer series paper over because technically this is where we're gonna adhere it. And this is directional, so I did cut these to portrait, meaning the side is longer than the top. So five and a quarter by three and one eighth. I'm gonna flip this over. This is kind of how we're gonna mark our angles. Now you do wanna grab a pencil. You can do a pen too, because we are marking on the back side or even a white gel pen if it's easier for you to see on dark paper. Um, you're not gonna see these marks after the um, paper is glued to the card front. So I'm gonna take this one and I'm going to line it up right along the top. You're gonna want your paper trimmer or something with a flat edge to do this part. Now the trick is I have this butted up right into the corner here. You wanna keep it butted up at the top, but I actually wanna move it to the right just a 16th of an inch. So if you're looking at your paper trimmer here, we are technically at two and seven eighths on the left side, okay? So this is three and one eighth inch wide, but if you lined it up here at the six inch, that takes us to two and seven eighths. I'm gonna move it just one sixteenth of an inch, so only to that next tick mark on the imperial measurements or the US measurements. I'm gonna slide that over to that. I'm leaving this butted up at the top. Okay, so we are just a 16th of an inch away from this side. Promise you this is going to work. So now I'm gonna line up this piece. I'm holding this piece in place. And actually you can kind of keep your finger here in the upper corner. You don't want to move this piece that's a 16th of an inch away from the edge. But we want the cardstock to butt up on the edge here and butt up on the top. Hopefully that makes sense. I'm gonna do it one more time. So I've got that pushed up to the top and the left, but I'm gonna slide it to the right a 16th of an inch. So just one little tick mark. Then I'm gonna line up the cardstock. The cardstock is butted up to the left edge and the top, but again, this is moved over a 16th of an inch. Now I can come in with my pencil and we're gonna mark that angle here, right where that cardstock lines up to the designer series paper, okay? Now we're gonna do the same thing, but we gotta use the bottom. So I'm gonna bring this down to the left and the bottom, and I'm gonna move it over 1 16th to the right. So see how there's just a little bit of a gap right there. Same thing, I'm not moving my card base. I'm gonna then butt up the bottom and the side, but again, that designer series paper is a 16th of an inch away from the edge, and then we can make our pencil mark. And those pencil marks are gonna get us exactly what we need. Okay, so just a reminder, the top angle, we've got this at the top, and I'm sliding it over a 16th of an inch from the edge. You could tape the DSP Ruby, but it really won't move on you as long as you're holding it in that corner, just to save you a step. Okay, you've got enough finger space here to hold that in place as you slide the cardstock into place. And then same thing along the bottom, go down to that corner here, slide it a 16th of an inch to the right, hold it there in the corner, and then you can bring your card base. Again, just take your time and make sure you're lined up on the left and the bottom and make your pencil mark, okay? So we only have to do that on the one piece. And then what we wanna do is sandwich the like sides together. So this is the pattern that I want on the outside of my card. I'm having those patterns touching each other, also going in the same orientation. So see, top to bottom, top to bottom, sandwich those together. And then you'll just line them up, and we're gonna line up those pencil marks right here in the cutting groove. The straight lines are real easy, easier to line up than the little tick marks. 
So again, that cutting groove right, or that pencil mark right along the cutting groove. We're cutting both at the same time. And I'm just gonna pivot, keeping them sandwiched together. And cut. I did that way too many times, but we like to cut through it twice. So then when we open these, we're gonna have two pieces that mirror each other. Okay. So now I'm flipping back to the side, the side that we scored on. So we've got valley score lines here. And then you could do the paperpixie.com slash patron. Try that one. And then we'll line those up there. So you'll see the angles are just right. We've got an eighth of an inch on either side. And that is how you do that with these angled trifold cards. All right, so liquid glue. Again, you can close these with magnets if you like. You can see how I did that in last week's live stream. I'm gonna do Velcro dots today, but you could do a ribbon closure or a belly band closure. I'm turning it this way because it's just easier for me to line up. There we go. I do like to smooth out the glue here. Thepaperpixie.com slash patron. All right, so liquid glue. I will add a link to join the Pixie Patrons in the description as well. Oh, it won't. If you just type it in the thing but don't hit enter to paste it, it's just because you're not logged into my account, I think. All right, so lining that up, smoothing out that glue. And there we have that, okay? So now I'm gonna go ahead and fold and burnish on the score lines. Could have done that before too. And now we've got our angled trifold, just a slightly different angle than last week's, like that, okay? So now I've got a piece of basic white that measures five and a quarter by four. And I'm gonna go ahead and adhere that to the inside. Thank you. There we go. And then I'm going to grab a Velcro dot. And if you're wondering, I've got a Velcro dot dispenser that I showed on a previous um, video tutorial. Um, and I purchased these from Amazon. They're linked on my favorites page. I love these. These are the uh, 5 eighths of an inch thin clear fasteners by Velcro. Pulling the backing off of the hook side. And I'm going to put that behind the left side of my fun fold here. Then pulling the backing off. There's a Kona hair there. So I've got the backing off of this one and then I'm gonna go ahead and fold it here. And now that's gonna hold itself together with the Velcro dots, okay? I like to kind of open it and then just press those Velcro dots in place. There we go. All right, so let's do a little bit of embellishing here. I'm gonna go ahead and grab another piece of scrap basic white. And we're going to use, oof, there we go. throughout the year is the stamp set. 
and you mean so much to me is the sentiment. This one's carrying over. All right. Gorgeous grape ink. If you sense a theme. <laughs> and stamp that onto basic white. Then I'm gonna grab this large die from the Stylish Shapes. Center that and we're gonna run it through the stamp and cut in a boss machine. There we have it, and I'm gonna add another faux bow of the white baker's twine, which is hiding over here. And this time I'm going to, oh, I'm gonna just kind of do it over here just so I have a, an idea of the size I want here. I think I need bigger loops, let's see. Just kind of eyeballing it over there. Okay, cut the tails off. Can trim them later. Glue dots. <laughs> you guys find when everything's in front of you, you can't find anything. <laughs> Sometimes that happens, especially when I'm live, right? What do I say? Things sprout legs and walk away, even though they're right under my nose. I'm just sticking that to the center of that to a glue dot. And it's getting all twisty on me. Let's see, we're gonna fix that. Ooh, as I pulled the, we're gonna do this on the card. Which way did I have this one? There we go. I'm kind of eyeballing where my center is going to be. And center meaning the center of the circle. I am putting the circle off to the left here. So this is going to go kind of right here in the center. All right. So I've got, this is kind of a little twisty on me. So I'm going to pull it off. Just straighten it out. And then fix it there. There we go. Like that. Uh... Dimensionals. Probably gonna add a couple more. That should be good. And we're gonna pop that right over our little Phobo. It's fun to say Phobo. I say it a lot, don't I? Centering it left to right, top to bottom, boop. And then let me trim off the edges here. And what do we need? We need a piece of bling. There we go. All right, so there we have our angled trifold card with a Velcro dot closure. And it's a standard card. This will fit in a normal medium size envelope. So the finished dimensions are five and a half by four and a quarter, which is our standard A2 card. Um, just to contrast to last week's, this one's got a magnetic closure. You might be able to hear that on the microphone. Um, so you can catch that on last week's episode, episode 325. So there are tonight's 
projects featuring the Perennial Lavender Designer Series paper and my favorite color, purple. All right, we're gonna go ahead and jump into tonight's Q&A. If you do have a question for me, uh, make sure you put a Q in front of that question. I'm about 20 to 30 seconds ahead of you. So if I don't catch your question at the tail end, it just means I'm um, moving faster. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and pull up questions here and we'll get started. Cynthia is up. Cynthia, I actually tried to call you today, but I couldn't get through to your number, so I did send you an email, so check your email. I did get the package, I got it yesterday. Thank you so very much, that was so sweet of you. Um, no specific news on timing, Ramona, but we have been told that the Stampin' Glass Mat Studio will be available for uh, demonstrators and customers to purchase. They will do it similar to product launches where there's a demonstrator pre-order period for the month prior to the customer launch. We just don't know the timing of it. So st stay tuned, don't worry, I will let you know when it is available, but it is coming. Let's see, um, kind of on my radar, Cindy. I just thought it was a really cute swap um, and was mostly just sharing it because I thought it was cute. I don't know if it'll make it to my list or not, but I will keep it in mind. I am going to Mexico, so is this guy. <laughs> we're looking forward to it. We've been getting ready for a few weeks, so we're looking forward to it. Great question, Margaret. Um, there is no specific way to see which stamp sets are new and which are carried over. I know that you guys have had lots of opinions in the chat, so I don't wanna censor you guys, but I do want you to make sure that we keep the chat positive because we've got a, new, a lot of new paper crafters here. And this is actually um, a, this is sort of a, a safe space for people. So I wanna make sure the chat stays positive for those that this, sometimes this is the highlight of people's week. And so I wanna keep it that way. But I know that there are a lot of things about this new catalog that for those of us that have been stamping for a long time, were like, whoa. <laughs> um, one of which being that they don't have the little um, red or pink N next to stamp sets that are new. So if you have any specific questions, Margaret, about stamp sets, I have a pretty good indication of which ones are carrying over versus which ones are new. So happy to let you know if there's any specifically that you wanna know if they're new or carried over. Part of the reason I believe that they did that is because um, new stampers who are brand new to Stampin' Up, I don't think they necessarily wanted to call out the new stamps versus the carryover stamps because to them they're all new, right? So they did take that um, away, but if you've got you know strong feedback about that, feel free to share it with me. I'm happy to pass that information along to Stampin' Up. Let's see. You took care of Jen K with the link, right? And I will also add to the video description the link for those of you that are not seeing the join button. It's a device thing. Um, what is it? Android, <laughs> Google, and Apple don't always play nicely together. So if you're um, viewing this on an Apple device, usually the join button doesn't show up if you're in the YouTube app. The only way you can get the join button to show up is if you go to a browser. Um, otherwise, you can just use my little magic link, which I'll add to the description for those of you not seeing it. Let's see, the latest news with Close to My Heart and Stampin' Up. So um, the Close to My Heart makers have this month to join the Stampin' Up family if they choose to do so, and they've got a great opportunity to purchase the starter kit for $25. So they have through April 30th, uh, the Close to My Heart makers have been given a special join link um, and that offer is available through April 30th. Um, so it's a, it's a wonderful opportunity for makers and I'm excited to hear about all of the makers that are joining our Stampin' Up! family because we do better when we're all together, don't we? So yeah, that's the scoop. This month um, they can join, they can start selling Stampin' Up! effective May 1st. Yes, our Pixie Patrons get together is tomorrow night. I mentioned that at the beginning, but you might not have been here. Our members only live stream is tomorrow night, episode seven at 8 p.m. Eastern time right here on YouTube. And it's specific to members only. So we'd love to have you join us. Let's see. Let's see, could you or have you completed a box for a pack of playing cards? I, I'm responding. Do I have one? I don't have one for no. playing cards. Okay. 
that's for that's sandy um a 3d project for a fishing lure i'll keep those well, ideas i, I said it depends on what size it is yeah, because fi so fishing lures uh, and like Pez dispenser, Pez dispensers, the other one I've been asked for, all of those are different sizes, so it's hard to do. Right, I'm sure you have one. A Is box it? that would fit a fishing lure. Right. Yeah, I didn't make one specifically. Or so I responded. To that. Okay, awesome. Would two Hershey's nuggets fit in the box? Um. Yes, but more than two would fit. So um, this box is actually not intended for Hershey's Nuggets, but yes, you could fit Hershey's Nuggets in there. They're just gonna be a little, the box is a little big for them. So I've got tons of Hershey Nuggets projects um, on my blog. So if you just type in the search term nugget at the paperpixie.com, you'll see lots and lots of projects for Hershey's Nuggets. Um, there will not be a PDF for the card, but it will post to my blog on Friday, assuming I feel okay. <laughs> um, so Friday is the plan for the blog post. You'll see all the measurements and a picture of the card, etc. So that will be on Friday. I might do a PDF, but for right now, I'm just doing the PDF for um, the 3D project. So let's see. Okay, what are my thoughts on the Stampin' Glass Mat Studio? So I actually have a glass mat. Um, it's not Stampin' Up! brand. It is by Glassboard Studios. Um, I will be unveiling it at some point because I absolutely love it, but I've got to fix my lights so that you don't have a glare. I don't, I'm very particular about what you guys see on camera. So um, I have a whole new setup kind of right behind me that has been taking me forever to get set up. Um, the Stampin' Glass Mat Studio is a great glass mat if you don't already have one. Um, I opted for one that's a lot bigger just because I have a bigger work surface that I work with underneath my camera. Um, but it is tempered glass. It's got, um, I'm, if I'm remembering correctly, metric and imperial measurements. It's great for working with alcohol inks. Um, ink in general, it's just really, really easy to clean up. So I love glass mats. Um, if you do videos, sometimes there's issues with glare. That's always the challenge with glass mats. That might be why you don't see a lot of demonstrators on video using them, because you have to get really strategic about where your lights are. So I think I've, we've figured it out, but stay tuned for that. You could use the scoreboard, Jane. The only trick is, well, yes, you could absolutely use the scoreboard. You're just gonna want, contrary to last week where we were able to work in the same corner in the same orientation, um, I'm doing it that way. I should do it this way because that's what it looks like for you. <laughs> um, the You'd have to turn your scoreboard like a quarter of a turn to do that bottom. The one I showed on the bottom of the paper trimmer, you just need to turn the scoreboard a quarter turns so that you've got a corner down in the lower left. So you need like upper left, lower left to do, excuse me, the angles for tonight's card. Hopefully that makes sense. Why am I calling it a trifold? Well, my understanding is a trifold is like those science projects. Aren't those called trifolds? Cause there's three panels. It's two folds, but three panels. So let's, let's try something. It's try because there's three. I'm not sure though, but all of us who have created the angled trifold have called it the angled trifold. <laughs> so I'm totally willing to say that I'm wrong. But I thought a trifold is like where you've got three panels, you know, like a science presentation. I don't know. Brian's looking it up. Maybe that's called something else. <laughs> but it is counterintuitive because there's only two folds but three panels. So I don't know. Who knows? Yeah, trifold poster. Ah, trifold poster, poster. I think that's why we're calling it a trifold, Anne. Is there an easy way to figure out how to use a pattern paper? I waste so much paper. Okay. I think I have the, the app for you. Although, Lydia, I'm not sure if you're on iOS or Android. Okay. So I've got an iOS app that I love. I have it linked on my favorites page. It's a free app and it's called Die Cut. D is in David, Y, C is in Charlie, U, T is in Tom. And it allows you to type in the starting size of your um, piece of paper. And then you can type in the measurements of the piece 
that you want to cut out of it and they'll tell you exactly how many you'll get and in what orientation to make those cuts to maximize that paper. So again, that is um, cutting multiples of the exact same size. That should help you um, not to waste paper. But I will tell you, part of being creative and crafting is we tend, we waste paper. So if you are working on a project that you're not quite sure how it's gonna turn out, my best tip for you is to use some um, pattern paper that you really don't like the pattern on, or maybe it's retired or it's old or you bought it from somewhere else and it's not a really high quality. You could even use junk mail, scrap paper, um, computer paper, and do some testing there before you cut into your pretty paper until you're pretty sure you know how you're gonna cut um, or you're pretty happy with the end results. And that way you don't waste the really pretty stuff. So those are just my tips, die cut app and then um, if you're practicing or working on a project and you don't have it quite done, use some paper that you don't love um, or junk mail, scrap, scrap paper, computer paper, that type of thing, copy paper. Let's see. Will that card stand up? I believe it will, Renee, because it's got the flat edges. So I'm going to test it really quick and I'll report back. Yes, it will stand up, but it is going to... It looks like your vest is open. <laughs> um, it just doesn't look totally cute standing up, if that makes sense. So it just does look better closed. Um, but yeah, it will stand up just because of the angles or the way that it opens. I don't know. It, look, it doesn't look that great. Maybe I'm being picky, but yes, because it's got those flat edges, it will. Those flat edges, it will stand up. Any luck finding the missing stamp set? Oh, the missing die. Yes, I actually posted a photo, Paula, right on my YouTube channel. It's stuck to the back of my, I have a paper tablet that has a magnetic cover on it and my um, stylish shapes die was stuck to the back of that. It was attracted to the magnet and I didn't think about that hiding spot until after the stream. And sure enough, I was like, ooh, I wonder if it's there. And there it was, but I did take a photo of it. You can find it on the community tab on my channel. Let's see. Could you figure out how to cut a layer DSP for a circle notch of a, okay, hold on. I'm, as I mentioned, I'm not <laughs> feeling 100%, so my brain is a little fried. Uh, a circle notch of a pocket or flap of a box. There's an even eighth of an inch of border or cardstock around. Yeah, so the challenge with that, I'm going to say no, I probably can't figure that out. And that is only because of the tools we might have available to do that. So the, the challenge with circles, well, at least with these, we're talking about like straight edged angles. <laughs> Those are easier to figure out, um, DSP layers. With circles, you've got to have sort of concentric circles that have different diameters. So technically, if you had uh, a one-inch circle and then you wanted to have a smaller circle fit inside of it, you'd technically need a half of an inch circle in order to have an eighth of an inch on either side diameter. So it gets really complicated with circles. So usually when I'm rounding corners or doing finger notches and things, I don't really worry about those fitting exactly. Hopefully that makes sense, Liz. Um, circles are a challenge. That's even, that's like mega geometry. Wait, are circles in geometry or is that just... Yeah. <laughs> My brain is fried, but yeah, great question. I see where you're going, but I think it's going to be really hard to figure out. I do not. I don't keep any retired products. A few exceptions. Every time I answer that, I say I don't, but then I usually have a few. Um, for product shares, we used to do uh, circle punch outs using the two and a quarter inch circle punch. That retired from Stampin' Up. I held on to that punch. I actually bought a second one from Amazon because they only punch so many circles. Um, I have a couple of those that I use in my business and I've hung on to, but as far as dies and stamps, they all go. 
<laughs> they all get sold in my retired item sale. And primarily that's because I don't want to demonstrate with them because how frustrating is that to fall in love with a stamp set and then you find out you can't buy it and add it to your stash. So I don't demonstrate with retired products. Um, and I got to make room for the new stuff. I actually this weekend pulled all the retiring stuff um, and have a bunch of space for new stuff. So I can't wait for that. Yes, the children are going to Disney. They're excited. We, we couldn't go there without them. So yes, they're coming. We actually haven't taken a family trip to Disney. So this will be our, um, our first trip. And I might be the most excited. The kids are excited too. Brian, I think, is excited as well. But we're just going <laughs> to... Brian doesn't do crowds so much. So, um, But I think we're going to go at a pretty good time of year. There's always a crowd at Disney, but we'll have a really good time. And I keep... Um, hyping up the kids because I'm like you have no idea what this is gonna be like like not in your wildest dreams so we're definitely gonna make a trip to Universal because Lily is Harry Potter obsessed we're gonna do that for sure so we're looking forward to it yes um, Stampin Up is going to offer the color wheel available for purchase what I don't know is if that is gonna be for customers or if that's only for demonstrators so I don't have details on that Stampin Up has just told us that they do plan to offer it in the future I just didn't see any details about whether that's just a demonstrator supply item or if it will be available to everybody so stay tuned for that when I've got more info let's see do you know why the Full of Life Designer Series paper is unavailable for demonstrators to order? I'm assuming, Hillary, that is from the, um, the new catalog. Page 43. So that was not available on the pre-order. That's why demonstrators can't order it now. That was a... Um, you do see some demonstrators that have it. That was one of the prize patrols at Onstage. Um, but for the for the rest of us, if we didn't get it, if we attended Onstage, take an Onstage out of it. <laughs> it was a prize patrol at Onstage, so some demonstrators have that paper, but it is not included in the pre-order. It will be available for purchase starting May 1st for everybody. I'm gonna skip that question, Sue. <laughs> She's asking about um, who watches the kids, but thank you for asking that. And then I think I've reached the end of the questions. Thank you guys so much for joining me tonight. Just a quick reminder, tomorrow night is my members only stream, 8 p.m. Eastern time, episode seven. You can join the channel membership by either looking for the join button below next to the subscribe button. If you don't see it um, right after the stream, I will add the link to join uh, the Pixie patrons. For those of you that don't see the join button, look for that in the description, okay? Um, what else do I have? Check out the last chance list. If you haven't had a chance to do that, that is while supplies last through April 30th. Um, product shares and in-color club sign up. Those are linked in the description. Those are available until April 28th. And I feel like I'm forgetting stuff, but... Um, I'm not firing in all cylinders tonight. So thank you guys so much for joining me for episode 326, I believe it is. I hope you have a wonderful and blessed week. I'll see my Pixie patrons tomorrow night. And we will be back live next week, April 24th, for episode 327. Thanks, everybody. Take good care. And here's a shout out to my Pixie patrons. Thank you so much for your support. Take care. See you next time. Bye.